Do not take your eyes off his briefcase, or you might miss it. Why is it becoming so difficult to figure out what is real and what is staged? For instance, who is this guy at the Emmys? I don't know who that guy was I hugged, but it was the guy from Atlanta. Oh, yeah. This video will also make you question reality. One minute we see him, the next, he's gone. But he's celebrating it, I'd love to play for him. But Paul's, he's, he's realistic. I studied acting at university, and this presenter's reaction seems far too genuine to just be a skit. It is incredibly sad. Because we live in such an unusual world, no one seems to be able to trust anyone these days, especially leaders. You want proof of this? Well, people are massively divided on what happened here. Was this just an innocent gesture, or was it something else? But here is the big question. Why have I shown you these videos? Well, the answer is simple. I do not want you to be mesmerized by signs and wonders. You see, the Bible tells us that one day there will be one who comes and he will perform greater miracles, greater mysteries than what we have just seen. And the Bible also says that everyone in the whole entire world pretty much will be deceived by this man. So who is this man that I speak of? His name is the false prophet. The Bible says, and he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast. Do you remember when I told you about Samuel in this video here? And do you remember how I said that he was summoned by King Saul and once he was summoned, he came up out of the earth? Well, that's a very similar description to what we're reading here, that the false prophet, he will come up out of the earth. Now, I might be totally wrong about this, but as I said in the video, I do believe there are two compartments to Hades. One side is a side of comfort, and the other side is a side of woe. Samuel obviously came from the side of comfort, and I believe now that the Lord Jesus Christ is risen from the dead, he is present with the Lord in paradise. But that leaves the other side. The side of woe, the side of misery, and personally I still believe that side is full of people who have rejected God and his word. And I think that could be where the false prophet will rise from. He'll rise up through the earth from Hades. But listen to me, that is not the mainstream Christian view. Most Christians believe that when it says the false prophet will come out of the earth, it means out of the land. In other words, they believe he will come out of the Holy Land, out of Israel. That's why many people are saying, could the false prophet be Jewish? And I will say this, I personally think that is also a very credible suggestion. So I'll let you look at all of the facts and you come to your own conclusion. But here is what I am 99% sure of. The Prince of Darkness is a copycat. You see, the God of Heaven, he creates, but the God of this world, he just copies. Why does he copy? So that he might steal some of the creator's glory for himself. And here is a prime example of the evil one's mimicry. As Christians, we believe in one God in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, some people have trouble accepting this, but they have no trouble in accepting the idea that we have water, ice, and steam. You see, these are all three different characteristics, but one substance, H2O. And although it's much more complicated than that, because the Lord God has his own holy trinity, what did the evil one want to do? He decided to make his own trinity an unholy trinity. The Bible says, and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth 
of the false prophet. You may already know this, but in case you didn't, the first person of the Trinity is God the Father. So who is trying to replace him in the unholy Trinity? Well, that is the Prince of Darkness himself, described as the dragon in the verse we've just read. And then the second person of the Trinity, that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, who is trying to replace him? Well, the clues in the name it is the person who is going to take the place, who is in the place of Christ, the man of sin himself, described as the beast in this verse. And then the third person of the Trinity is the Holy Spirit. Who is trying to replace him? Well, that is the false prophet. And I'm about to show you just why. The Bible says, and he, that is the false prophet, exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast. It's no secret that the Holy Spirit's focus is to point people, is to shine a light on the Lord Jesus Christ. So what is it that the false prophet will do? Well, he will shine a light. He will push all of the focus, as we've just seen, onto getting people to worship the first beast, the man of sin. Oh, mark my words, the false prophet will be the man of sin's PR man. No one will be more loyal to him than he. He will do big things, bad things, all in the name of the beast. Between you and me, I believe it is super important for us to study Revelation and to prepare for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you personally agree with that, please do consider subscribing because I hope if the Lord allows me to make many videos in the future telling people to look out for the signs of his coming. Let me choose my words carefully now, but I believe that the false prophet actually might be younger than the man of sin. I'm just speaking out loud here, but scripture does describe the false prophet as having two horns like a lamb. In other words, he isn't fully grown yet. He hasn't got those two large horns like we'd see on a ram. No, right now, he is meek. Right now, he is gentle. And it's a bit like this. When you see a little lamb, you are drawn to them because they look so young and innocent. However, Compare this to the man of sin who has seven heads and ten horns. When this man arrives on the scene, yes, he too will be persuasive. Yes, people will be drawn to him too. But I believe he will have a certain aura of power about him. And it's essential to remember this though. Even though the false prophet may appear to be gentle like a little lamb on the surface, we must all remember that inside he is planning unthinkable evil. Jesus did warn us, did he not? Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. It's absolutely critical that anyone who can hear my voice, who might just happen to be around when these things come to pass, you must know this. If any man arrives on the scene and brings about worldwide unity, worldwide peace, especially amongst religions, you should be very wary of that man because that is exactly what the false prophet will do. And some of you might ask the question like me, how will this man manage to unite professing Christians with Muslims? How will he unite Jews with Christians, Sikhs, Buddhists, Hindus? How will he bring them all together? Well, there will be one reason and one reason alone. He will do it by performing great miracles. Again, Jesus did warn us, for false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Did you catch that? So in the final moments of earth, false prophets will work such incredible signs and wonders that even God's people will consider leaving the truth and pursuing their lie. And that's really why I want to hammer home this one key point. We must be so careful not to emphasize miracles too much. Now, please, no one misunderstand me. I personally still believe that God works miracles, and I also believe that unbelievers, many of them, cannot deny the supernatural world. But the problem arises when we, as men and women, only hunger after miracles, and we chase them just like the crowds chased the gold rush all those many years ago in America. But the question does need to be asked, are we as excited when a very ordinary preacher stands up in a church and opens the word of God? Yes, he's not elegant. Yes, he's not a charismatic speaker, but he's faithful to the word of God. Are we as excited to hear him speak? 
Oh, he's excited to know that there is a confidence in the powerfulness of the Word of God, this living Word. Do we have that same power and belief in that? Oh, he's excited when we hear about a man or woman who was lost in their sin, and yet they were converted by the Lord Jesus Christ, because that's no less a miracle than any other. In fact, that's the finest miracle, when God takes a lost man and breathes life into them, eternal life. Or are we just constantly chasing after the glamorous Christianity, the Christianity which is so exciting? Does that thrill us? Or can we be thrilled by the simplicity of the Word of God? Too. Have you heard the account of the rich man and Lazarus? You see, here is this rich man and he finds himself in that place we were talking about earlier. He finds himself in the side of Hades where there is total sadness. So what does he do? He pleads with the patriarch Abraham and he says, please, would you send Lazarus, that poor man who used to sit at my gate, please send him to warn my five brothers never to enter this place. This is what Abraham said back to him. They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, no, Father Abraham, but if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he said to him, if they do not hear Moses and the prophet, neither will they be persuaded, though one rise from the dead. How many times have you heard people say something similar? Oh, if only, if only Jesus Christ would appear in front of us all at a time when we all have iPhones, all have smartphones, we could film him and there would be the evidence for us all to see. Perhaps you yourself have thought at times, if only I could see God physically, it would really help my faith. Oh, if only one of the patriarchs, Moses, would come back. If only there was a sign in the sky, then I would believe. And yet, what does Abraham say? What does the scripture say? It says, you have the law and the prophets. You have the Bible itself. And if you don't believe that, you would not even believe if one would rise from the dead. And you know that scripture, that verse, it was prophetic because Jesus Christ, he himself, he had many skeptics on earth. Many people doubted him. Many of the Pharisees said, no, this is not the son of God. He is a liar. And yet those same Pharisees, they saw Jesus Christ pinned to that cross. They saw him die. And then they also saw him risen from the dead. And did they turn to him? Did they put their trust in him? Well, some did, but the vast majority, they still remained stubborn. And the truth is, you and I are so very stubborn. Doesn't matter what signs, what miracles, what the Lord God shows us, if we do not believe in his word, if we do not have confidence in the scripture, we wouldn't believe even if God turned up in the same room right in front of us. Why? Because so many men and women, they love their sin so much. They have loved darkness rather than light. But here's something that's kind of crazy. We've talked a little bit about other religions, but what is it that makes Christianity so different? And many of you, I don't know if you've ever considered this before, but other ancient religions, they have their texts, they have their scriptures that they believe are divine. But the difference is, Christianity has its ancient texts. But the difference between these words is those words became alive. They became a person and that person came and lived amongst us. The Bible says, the Word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. And that Word is the Lord Jesus Christ. He came and lived amongst us and took on a flesh so that he might be the saviour of all flesh. Because this flesh, this body that you're looking at right now, has committed many sins. I have failed God many times. I've broken many of the laws and commands of the Lord God. And yet Jesus Christ kept them all and decided on the cross to die there in my place. And not just my place, but yours also. So will you trust in him? Will you come to the one, although there are many false prophets, many false Christs, there is one who is the way, the truth, and the life, and you can trust in him. And you can have certainty that all of your sins, past, present, and future, can be washed away, and you can be saved by him. If you put your trust in him, the word who became flesh is willing right now to dwell in your heart, and to change you, and to make you into a new creation, and to give you eternal life, because he has come back from the dead. He's risen from the dead and right now he's seated at the right hand of the Father on high and he's preparing a place for all those who love him and want to trust in him. Let me ask you a question. Will he be preparing a place for you?
Is there a place in heaven with you? Is there a little house with your name on it because Jesus Christ died for you and you've trusted in him? I hope so. And if that is, is not so, well, let me tell you this. Right now, Jesus can start preparing that place because it's all you have to do is call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. Why do you resist? Why are you stubborn? Turn away from yourself and turn to Jesus Christ and he'll save you and give you eternal life right now. But hey now, there is one vital piece of information I forgot to mention about the false prophets. It says that just like Nebuchadnezzar, do you remember that old king who created a vast big image, a statue, and he commanded all the people to bow down and to worship this image? Well, the false prophet will also create some kind of image and he will command the whole world to worship this image, which is dedicated to the beast. We don't know if it'll be a hologram, maybe it'll be some kind of image on a phone maybe it'll be a statue we don't know what it is but we do know that the whole world will be deceived into worshiping this image and something else we do know is that the false prophet linked to this image he will do something with every single person in the world's head and their hand if you want to know more about this click this video right away